Hello ladies and gentlemen, Chris here with another project. Today we are going to find the best way to do copper plating yourself. I had a look around the internet to check the possibilities we have. Turns out there are quite a few ways for DIY copper plating. Since I need to plate some steel objects for another project, I figured I'd give a few of the more promising methods a proper test. So let's find out what works best. I decided on three methods I wanted to investigate further. These basically differ by the electrolyte they use. All of them are made from cheap and widely available substances though. So first we are testing a method involving baking powder. In the second test we are using vinegar and the third method uses muriatic acid. As for the basic setup, we need some copper electrodes, a small glass container and a power supply. We also need some parts to code for our test. I decided to make a few identical steel rings on my lathe. This way I avoid any variation due to different surface finishes, contamination or pre-existing coatings. I polished the outer diameter and finished the sides with sandpaper. For the electrodes you could basically use anything made from pure copper. In this experiment I'm going to use copper wire. In order to increase the submerged surface area, I gave it some bands. All of the electrodes used in this test are formed in the same way. The current for the electrochemical process is provided by a lab power supply. That allows for very fine control over the process. I decided to stick with a constant voltage of 5 volts for all my tests. The reason for that is that you could use some AA batteries connected in series as a power source. You may don't have an adjustable power supply on hand, but chances are you can find some AA batteries for this project. Four of those would give you approximately 5 volts, depending on their state of charge. Using the lab power supply made for a more reproducible setup though. The process of plating is generally the same for all the methods we investigate. It involves two steps. First we are infusing our electrolyte with copper. Then we use the infused fluid for the actual plating process. For my tests I used an infusing time of 30 minutes and 15 minutes for the coating process across all the methods. Also if you are working with copper in an electrochemical process you end up with toxic fluids. Make sure you store them safely and dispose them properly. The process of electroplating also releases hydrogen. Therefore, working in well-ventilated areas is advised. Since the foundation is laid now, we can start with our first test. For this method, we use conventional baking soda dissolved in distilled water. Putting these ingredients into a small jar and stirring them up produced the desired solution. Since I used baking powder with some additional elements in it, my electrolyte turned out rather cloudy. If you have the chance to use pure baking soda, you should do that, but the additional substances in the solution should not influence the quality of our plating. This approach, while being very cheap, brings the disadvantage that you need to stir the solution from time to time, to avoid the baking soda falling out of solution. Now we can start applying current to the solution. I did not limit the current on the power supply. Depending on how much baking soda was in solution at any given time, the bath drew between 17 and 100 milliamps. By not limiting the current on the side of the power supply, the amount of current drawn depends purely on the conductivity of the actual fluid. As the time passed, the solution went from a plain white color to a more and more bluish color, indicating the copper is getting dissolved. Checking the copper anode showed increasing amounts of electrochemical corrosion. If you compare the cathode and the anode, you can clearly see that the surface of the anode had gotten dull. After 13 minutes, I removed the copper cathode and replaced it with our test piece. Since cleanliness is critical if you do any kind of electroplating, I cleaned all of the remaining oil and fingerprints off of the rings using acetone. After 5 minutes of plating, you can already see a pale copper color on the surface. 5 more minutes of plating left us with a thin layer of copper. 
and after 15 minutes we got a decently good copper coat on our test piece. The perimeter of the ring ended up very shiny and did not lose any of its polish. And that's what the electrodes looked like after the coating process. After our first successful attempt of electroplating with baking soda, we can now investigate another option. This time we are using a typical household vinegar as an electrolyte. I diluted the vinegar with about the same amount of distilled water and put a set of new electrodes in our little coating path. Connecting the power supply up revealed a tiny amount of current flowing through the solution. Checking the current with multimeter showed a value of about 20 mA, which is too low for a cheap power supply to even pick up. Cleaning the anode did not help matters either. Using more vinegar or a higher voltage would probably have sped up the process of getting the copper from the anode into solution. But as mentioned before, I tried to do these tests so that you could easily recreate them at home with some batteries. Therefore, I stuck to my settings. As in the first test, I replaced the cathode after 30 minutes of infusing with a clean test piece. As to be expected from the small amount of power our setup is drawing, the process is a lot slower than the previous one. The bubbles of hydrogen forming on our test piece show that it is working though. Even after 10 minutes of electroplating, you can barely see a slight touch of copper on our test piece. At the end of our test, we got a very thin layer of copper onto the ring. Another method people use to do copper plating at home is to use muriatic acid as an electrolyte. This stuff is a little more expensive and harder to obtain, but you should be able to find it in hardware stores. It also is a lot more dangerous than the previous fluids. Because of its highly corrosive nature, you should handle it using rubber gloves and eye protection. As with the previous method, I mixed the acid with the same amount of water. I again put some new electrodes into the glass and applied the power. From the violent bubbling on the cathode, it seems that we are getting the copper faster in the electrolyte than with the other methods. Which is also to be expected, because we put way more power into the fluid than with the previous attempts. The cathode also showed a way larger amount of corrosion due to this fact. Observing this, I could have used less acid which would make the solution less conductive and therefore draw less current. After 30 minutes, when I put in the test piece, I immediately got a dark crust due to that excess of power. I cleaned the piece and reduced the current limit on my power supply. Then I put it in for a few more minutes. I'd say in total I had it in the electrolyte for about 5 minutes. Removing it and wiping the dark crust away revealed a way duller surface than the one we got with the other methods. I think that's the case because the hydrogen forming on the object attacked the polished surface. But on the other hand, the coating we got seemed to be thicker. If you compare the results of the three methods side by side, you can clearly see the differences in color and surface texture. If you are shooting for shiny surface, I would go with the baking soda method. I guess with closer control of the voltage and the current, you could get similar results with the muriatic acid as well. If you need more durability and a faster process, the muriatic acid is the way to go in my opinion. Unfortunately, I have no way of testing the thickness of the coatings, but I really wanted to see the differences in durability. Therefore, I mounted the three test pieces onto a screw and took them to the polishing wheel. It had some polishing abrasive on it. 
Even the first run of polishing proved how thin the layer was. Unfortunately, the camera does not show that particularly well. I polished the stack of rings a little more, so that all of the pieces showed blank spots. Examining the results of the test showed that the coating process using muriatic acid took the treatment the best. Just a very small area of steel had been exposed. The baking soda is the distant second. It had large blank spots but was notably better than the one using vinegar. So in conclusion I would use a baking soda solution if I intended to use a fixed power supply or batteries. In case you have an adjustable power supply you may use muriatic acid. But make sure you turn the power way down in order to get good surface finishes. Good luck with your attempts and thanks for watching.